Well, is this old business or ongoing business? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call it ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Any sure it's old. As you guys know, um, I mean, uh, I threw together a quick PowerPoint. It's kind of a review of everything we've talked about for the past. Well, I've been talking about it for about 12 years. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna, we've been talking about it officially with the Joint Ambulance Districts and the, and the Board of Commissioners for one year, uh, September 2nd of 2020 is when we started. Um, we have gotten a lot accomplished. One and anniversary. Yes. <laughs> and, but I think at this point, uh, we have to get the who, what, where, when, why, and how all kind of ironed out so we can either fish or cut bait. And I think we're, it's not getting any easier, especially in light of the pandemic that we're in, still in the middle of, regardless of your political opinion, it truly is a problem. Um, so EMS is the beginning cornerstone of healthcare here. A lot of people, this is their primary access to it. So we're gonna talk about that in the future of our EMS system as we move forward. If anybody has any questions, just stop me uh, and we'll, we'll just go. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna to move to a full-time EMS system in, in Seneca County that's not already, in areas that are not already covered by someone else by contract. What that means is currently we use volunteers and we have used volunteers almost exclusively for 43 years. Uh, volunteers are gonna be here for the rest of uh, the foreseeable future on into history. However, we don't have enough to be effective, so we need to kind of flip the script and support full-time people with volunteers instead of full-time people supporting volunteers. And we need to ensure that everybody in Seneca County has access to advanced life support healthcare within 10 minutes from the time of the call. That's really important, and there's plenty of documents out there uh, medicine that explains why that's important. So why are we doing this? Well, uh, as we've uh, evidenced everywhere in society, the volunteerism is declining from the National Red Cross all the way through Salvation Army down to the, the volunteer fire and EMS divisions. Uh, we need to be very proactive in the approach to that. So if we wait until we don't have anybody, then we are severely behind the eight ball. So, what we've done is we've done some studies and we can see that our out of service numbers are increasing and the number of volunteers are declining. The state and federal legislature that is making it more difficult to maintain certification and the training and all the things that are required to be a health care provider are not decreasing, they're increasing, which is harder on a volunteer to maintain that stuff. That's why we're doing it. How are we going to do it? So we're going to better leverage the funds that we have existing. Uh, currently, there's about $1.6 million in the Joint Ambulance District carryover funding. We need to get ourselves on a path uh, to be able to take advantage and leverage those funds to do what we need to do and get our path together on uh, towards a single Joint Ambulance District. And then we constantly reevaluate that effectiveness and make adjustments as we need to. Um, and moving forward, who is going to help us do this? Our strategy based on who wants to be a part of it. Um, we may change it depending on which of the joint ambulance districts want to partner with us and move forward, or the ones who choose to do it themselves or contract with a private entity or something of, of whatever they choose to do. Um, you got to remember that EMS is not an essential service at the federal level, state level, or local level. You do not have to provide it, but it's almost necessary in today's world to provide it. And if we're going to provide it, we have to do it to the standard. And that standard is ALS on scene within 10 minutes um, to provide the best care we can pre-hospital. And we've known this for years. We are way better when we work together than if we try to fragment and work it all separately. We're gonna do better if we're co cohesive and collaborative. <coughs> so how? This is the way we're gonna do it. This kind of explains the thought process and the planning and all of the things that we've done through best practice studies and things like that through the state and national organizations. Initially, we're gonna uh, evolve our system on the east side, which is where we have a, a decrease in volunteers the most. And we're gonna have a full-time ambulance over there. Uh, if we can build one station, staff it with two trucks, and then we'll have a backup squad on the east side. So we'll have three squads on the east, one of them full-time all the time, one will be staffed by volunteers and call-in personnel, and the third one will be staffed the same way. That way we always have a shoot time, an out-the-door time. As soon as the bell drops, we're out the door, and we get that 10 minutes. Same thing on the west side. Uh, geographically centered 
on the west side. Uh, we'll have a full-time ambulance, full-time ALS crew, 24-7, 365, and then a second squad staff there with a volunteer crew and part-time staffing as necessary. The third squad on the west side will be a New Regal. New Regal is one of our gems. They have plenty of volunteers. They have talented professionals there who are very capable of maintaining this squad for years to come. But what we will do once we build the infrastructure and have the personnel available is be able to augment them with paid people. So we flip the script. So instead of having volunteers that necessarily always have to push, 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 and the same people do all the work, we have volunteers and paid people working together side by side to be successful long term. And we will retain our echo paramedic. Uh, the echo paramedic is a very, a very well known now uh, countywide asset. Uh, it's also been picked up all around the state. Cleveland's using them now. Um, they call them Delta units, which is kind of cool. They just changed the name a little bit. Um, they provide leadership training, supply inventory, uh, and keep us compliant with state and local federal regulations for medication supply. And in the future, and this is something you've probably heard about in the news or somewhere else, we'll have a role in community paramedicine, telehealth, and mobile integrated healthcare. What that means is Medicare and the big three insurance companies are working towards if we can treat people in place, we don't have to overburden our emergency departments to bring patients all the way to a hospital just because they have uh, maybe a small allergic reaction. We can medicate that patient on scene, follow up with a patient using an iPad or telehealth presence, uh, in intervention from a physician at the hospital. We treat the patient in place, the patient stays home. We give them follow-up instructions, they call us back if they do need to go to the hospital at some time later. Those are things that happen already in some systems. We need to develop that here so we can be a good partner in our healthcare system. So to, to provide what you just described, you need to be a paramedic, yeah, the yes. paramedic level. Yeah, it does require an ALS um, system to do that, which we have been, but we need to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And then because of the um, increase in training and things like that, we'll, we'll need to increase our standard of care. Uh, what we don't want to do is decrease it. So uh, the next phase of this will be a future in the north. Um, we know we need to uh, get a presence back in Adams and Pleasant Township in the village of Green Springs. That'll bring our whole county together under one countywide system. Where would we put that? Somewhere in the geographic center in the very northern half of our county. Um, I'm not going to spitball any ideas because I don't know who owns the land and I'm, I leave that to you guys that are the experts and know where, how we can procure a place to build a station or if maybe something already exists. But we know it needs to be geographic centrally located in the center part of the northern half of the county. So Some, at, that, at that moment it would be a three squad? Three yes sir, three full time model. squads. So and you start with two, yes, sir. you add third. Uh, so we would have still a total of six at the most seven ambulances with one backup being eight at public safety that we would maintain. There would always be two yes, sir. vehicles because of the volunteers. Yep. Okay. And then, um, yeah, so we can talk about where they're going to be once sure. we decide who's coming in and what order they're coming in. Exactly. Because uh, depending on what the joint ambulance districts decide, we may not have a presence in one area, but we may have a more present in another yeah. area. Okay. So, so I'm following. Yeah. That's good. And this is kind of my wrap up. And really this whole thing is what we're going to talk about at the October 7th meeting. I wanted to make sure that everybody had an opportunity to review it. And we've been talking about this for a long time and we've worked together for a very long time. And Seneca County is, EMS is something that we can all be proud of. It's been a very strong collaborative <coughs> cooperative agreement between the townships and the county for 43 years. And we stand on the shoulders of the volunteers that got us where we're at. And they do an amazing job. Um, some of the, our volunteers are so well-trained and educated, we couldn't possibly afford them if they wanted to work for us. So I'm glad they do it for free. We have registered nurses, nurse practitioners, even physicians that volunteer with us. And um, obviously they would never be uh, interested in a full-time job as an EMT, but we do have the youth of our community who is coming up and needs uh, a future and also a stepping stone into the healthcare industry. And this is the way. You know, I started as a basic EMT, went through, got my paramedic and got my nursing license and was a flight medic for a flight nurse for 10 years. Uh, this is the place you start doing things like that. We can locally grow them, create jobs. But what we need 
The county needs full financial commitments from the joint ambulance districts to help us complete this. And we need operational control to continue it and grow it with an emphasis on that advanced life support standard of care. And eventually we'll be one joint ambulance district. Um, what that board will look like, I'm not sure exactly how big it'll be, but Derek has some good uh, advice on that. The board would regularly meet and it would be an advisory board and it could uh, contain people from each township, the county, local physicians, nurses, other people who have interest in this, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And really that's what I wanted to present to you today. It's just basically how we're planning on doing it, the who, what, where, when, and why, and how. And uh, any questions anybody has, I'd be happy to take them. Yeah, I have two comments for you for yes, the sir. meeting as we get ready for the meeting. Mm -hmm. So thanks for bringing us in. Um, so you would like to be on the agenda and present this on Thursday? Yes. I would like you. Is that good with you guys? Yeah. Mike, thank you. Well, I, I, I have a couple I, comments. I, okay. I, yeah. you to answer you your question quickly, I not only think that Ken needs to be on the agenda, I think that we need, I think he needs to be the agenda. At this point in time, you know, we're above our pay grade as commissioners talking about the logistics and talking about the kind of people that we need to hire and the things that we need to do. We've made the decision that it will be two or three uh, full-time sites. we made the decision that that's where we want to go. I believe it's time for us now to step back and let the professionals implement the plan. So, in my opinion, as we meet with the, you know, with the, with the joint ambulance districts, the time has come to hand the baton to emergency uh, me medical services and let them control the narrative as we go forward. Uh, we certainly have the decision to make regarding uh, how it's going to be funded and approval of the sites once they are recommended to us. But everything that has to do with patient care or logistics with volunteers and or full-time people what we should be out of. It needs to go to the people that do that. So we have got to the point, at least in my opinion, we've done what we can do. We've made a decision. Uh, we all don't agree exactly how we're going to get there, but we know where we want to get to. Mm -hmm. The time's come to give it to the people that know what they're doing to take it to the next step. So the answer to the question is not only do I think you ought to be on the agenda, I think he should be the person that runs the meeting and we can sit in the background and answer questions. Okay, so I, this, is, um, um, this is where I agree with you. Uh, the, uh, the clinical part, Ken, you've, you mentioned ALS and, yes, and why that is the, that is the future. Um, I, I, think, I think there's two parts to the meaning. You may end up with the biggest part of the meaning. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with you running the whole meeting. Uh, because we still need to talk about money, um, who's in, who's out. We, we, I think we have another month here of some of that going on behind the scenes. Um, but clearly, I, I support Commissioner Kirshner in uh, featuring you as to how operationally this is all going to going to run. So I think I would like to see you. I brought up last meeting, I'm not sure I knew exactly what I was talking about uh, in detail, but I do understand the difference between a, uh, an ALS um, EMS system versus a, let's say, fire-based uh, EMS system and, and, and the, the benefits and the quality and the difference, okay? So, so all of that, I like the two squads, the three squads, you've said this a million times, we can phase it. Commissioner Kirshner's brought up, we need a pilot. I'd like to see us kind of pivot and maybe look over in ABR, Blue Tokyo area, about you know uh, getting something there started that would make the most sense. Back on the financial piece, um, we have separate districts. Separate districts have money in the bank. They're clearly separate until they decide they're not separate and they're part of us. Now, where the money part comes in, I think we're being taken advantage of. I know how both of you feel and the fact that you hired four people. Mm -hmm. We're paying those four people out of county money. The intent when we hired the four people was to put two east, two west and have the districts pay us for that. 
currently that's not happening and there's no there's reasons but there aren't any reasons that we can think of going forward why they shouldn't be paying us and if that means they need to take money out of that million dollars they got then that's what they have to do um, we are subsidizing these people we've given each side a rate right stace that's less than what we're paying it's fair they're clearly using our people all the time have we ever missed a week where we haven't had two east and two west no no uh, it's helped the out-of-service schedule it's helped take the burden off the volunteers um, and so it's working for short term mm -hmm. okay and your your point and i agree with you the paid people aren't supposed to support the volunteers forever at some point it's going to flip and that's where you're headed and i support all that mm -hmm. okay so what i'd like to see in the meeting maybe commissioner is in the, in the two-part discussion would be um you know and, and the people on the east and the people on the west can get together and figure out how they're going to do it but i think we need to be paid beginning november 1st or some number that we all agree on have to start paying us well i think we heard yeah. something out of uh, uh director Mercha hendrew when he said he, he submitted a comprehensive plan to the state for his uh, four county uh, mental health recovery district we submitted a comprehensive plan for success in july of 2020 and we have not approved or adopted that plan yet so i think that would make a big inroad towards um developing the seriousness of the situation and presenting to the joint ambulance district so that we are ready to move um because why would you ever pay a dime if nobody ever makes you yeah that's right. Well, and I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm just saying. No, but that's what I'm saying. No, they, saying. They, they need to start paying. We're moving forward, and I and Commissioner Kirsch is I'm preaching that. Yes, sir. And I support that, mm -hmm. Commissioner, 100. percent I think at the times here, it's been a year. Um, we're moving forward. We're committed to ALS care, and as as commissioners, I'm not speaking for you two, but for me, whoever comes in, that's who we're supporting. Mm -hmm. If you don't come in, we're not going to support you, because this is where we're headed with you running it yeah. right so I, I think that's what you're trying to say and I think well I, I just think it's time to transition but I agree I, with you that. know we got a big picture and that's our job is to look at it from a bigger picture standpoint yeah, yeah. when it comes to implementing uh, I think the first thing that we need to do is approve the PowerPoint presentation that we agree with the items in there so that uh, the people that come to the meeting next week understand that we are in lockstep with uh, uh with management on this yeah. so i i could i would maybe like to formally approve that if anybody is of the desire to make a motion to do that i'd like to make a motion that we uh approve or that we accept support the uh vision or plan for the uh, seneca county wide ems uh, system for the future yeah I, i'll second that good uh, that's good Hi. Hi, sir. Commissioner Schiff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirschner? Yes. Well, and I think that one of the things that we have that has to be pointed out is we're, you know, we're, we're doing uh, the opposite of what people complain that politicians don't do. And that is that we're, you know, we're trying not to kick this can down the road. That's right. We're trying to face the problem, come up with a solution, and it's difficult because not everybody agrees with your solution, but you have to come up with something that makes the most sense. You know, the, the, the phrase follow the science seems to be dominant in what we talk about these days amongst other things. Well, in this case, we're following best practices. We're following the procedures that we have researched that are out there that have the best results. We want to make certain that somebody's there in 10 minutes and takes care of you professionally. Uh, and, the only way to get, yeah, and the only way to get that done is to, to do what Ken's plan uh, suggests. So yeah, and that's I, where I, we're I, think, I think it's time for action. I mean, we've been talking about this for 10 years, or I mean, just for me, it's been a year, less than a year, but um, yeah. I think we, let's start getting the buildings up. If you're in, you're in. If you're out and want to go your own way, that's your problem. Yeah, but you're going to have a better yeah, service when we work together. And remember, we just two final comments. So when we started, Commissioner, it was this could be a long term plan. And the definition of long term a year ago was six, seven years. Then it was five, six years, and then it was three, four years. And somewhere in this conversation, it's now two years. So, um, and that's because 
we're getting some momentum with the stakeholders, but it's also because the, the environment that we're in, the world's changing, right, that you've clearly mentioned here, the decline in, in volunteers, all that trajectory is accelerated. And um, you made the famous comment, if not now, when? I think it's, we've got the opportunity to do it. Now, looking back at your PowerPoint, I love it. I think you should leave it just like it is. And you, you have enough wiggle room in there. So for example, if we don't put, if we put a uh, squad in the east, we may put one in the north before the west. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. We may put one in the west. The beauty of this plan east. is it's scalable. It's scalable. It can be so as big as you want or as small as you need. So the way you have it laid out, you have to, I, it flows the way it would make sense, but in the end it may go a different direction. But, yes. But your point is supported by me. I get it. Thank you. Yeah, and I really like the fact how you uh, described how volunteers would fit in because I think that is a big missing piece, Commissioner. Yeah. We, we leave and it's like, you mean this will be paid and volunteers? Yeah, well, how can we pay the volunteers? And, you know, you might want to have ready. That, those, that's a, that's those really support. more of a legal question, but I yeah. think we have the answer. But I think and we do. It may just take a reclassification of the name of them so that we can, um, and, and the names that I've heard, and uh, like none of this is original. All of this has been copied from other successful EMS systems. Uh, in Oak Harbor, Mid-County EMS uses part paid on call. Those people are just standing by. They put themselves on a schedule and go, hey, if a call comes in, I'm there. They always have a full-time crew standing by, but then the second call is always the volunteers. Are they volunteers? Because they get paid. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's more of a play on words, but it's a legal play on words. And that's where we need our Derek Devine. I think those are the kind of the questions mm -hmm. that you can anticipate Monday. And I, yes. I agree with Commissioner Chris. I think that's something you should ask. Look at our prosecutor. Yep. And I think the name, it. the naming, it's just a, it's a legal term. We can call them volunteers, but really they're going to be compensated, part paid. Um, may not make a dime to be on the schedule, but they're going to get paid fifteen bucks an hour if they go on a run. If you know? they don't want it, I'm not really sure how we do it, but I know we can do it. They don't want it. Yes, that's yeah. right. And you can be a hundred percent true volunteer. That is a possible thing, and we will have some people who want to do that. I'm sure of it. You a question? Yeah, I have a question. Have you set a uh, a date where these um, districts have to either say they're going to be in or out? Uh, have you actually we, set a, a date? Yeah, we as a moving target. The latest day is November first, which was oh. ninety days yeah. from our first meeting. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So that's our date. Yeah. Because it would seem to me like you have to have a. Yeah. Certain date, you're either in or you're out, and we go from there. Can you come to our meeting? Monday? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> we we would love you to make that statement. But I say, <laughs> yeah, we don't, are, we don't ask them to pay. They never will. Why would you? Yeah, yeah. and you know, and we, we, our intent was always to have them. We're talking about the four people, not the big picture. Absolutely. Districts merging and all that at this point, but mm -hmm. that's come. Yes, we're past. Thank well, you for your time. When a truck goes down, I mean, there's no question who's paying for it. We're, we're, we're paying for those repairs. We're paying for the new trucks. But right. currently, for, right now, we're paying for, paying for everything. personnel. It's, it's crickets. Yes, sir. And I think uh, the part the part yeah. we're missing, and I don't know how to get around it, is we've talked about this a lot. All of us in this room, and Jimmy in the back, we've been talking. We've, we care so much about EMS, and we don't have to legally by statute. But True. we we want to help. And we just would like the people in these districts and the leadership in these districts to realize that one plus one equals three. If we can take the commissioner's backing and everything you're doing, the equity and all that we're doing, and merge it in with what they're doing out there, we really have something versus everybody trying to do it alone mm -hmm. or not doing it. And so this is the frustrating part. I, don't, I think at times, we're the bad guys, and all we're trying to do is help. You know, and I think the other part is with fire, we are not a fire-based EMS system in Seneca County. We love all our volunteer fire departments. We need them. Okay, but just because we're talking EMS or separate EMS in certain locations outside of firehouses or villages doesn't mean we're the bad guy. It just means we're trying to do something smart that's financially 
uh, smart and that we can get everywhere in 10 minutes. We're going to have to strategically put these squads as you described. That's nothing to do with we don't like the fire department. Uh, we're, we're trying to improve our safety services for everybody in the county. Yeah, and so I just think the narrative, we just got to keep forging ahead. We care. We want to help. We're putting time frames on us. I like the fact we're doing this, Commissioner, because we need to just, we need to move forward. And, and we're here well, to help. Another thing that's a, a big popular saying out there these days, and this works in, in our favor, I think, is follow the money. And when you follow the money, with emergency managed medical services in Seneca County, you will see that you know, when I first sat on this board seven years ago, we were, our budget was like 350000 <laughs> Yes, Is that right? That we, yeah, contributed, we, we, yes. The county actually spent $350,000 on, yeah. on EMS. This year we will spend how much? Well, the budget is set at $1.2. $1.2 million. So, uh, again, if you follow the money, as a matter of what's important to this board, and what's important to us as far as making sure the citizens are handled, you'll see that we have put our money where our mouths are here. We, we need to make certain that people are taken care of, but we also need the cooperation of all the ambulance districts to make it more efficient. Uh, and we're going to continue down that path. I hope to goodness that every ambulance district out there becomes part of a countywide system. But it may not happen that way, and if it doesn't happen that way, then the configuration as to where we have our stations is going to be different. And there's no going back, or very probably a little chance to go back if uh, certain districts go on their own. But they have to remember, and I, I know I'm repeating a lot of things, but they have to remember they have to have their own administration if they go on their own. They have to have their own medical director if they go on their own. The county supplies all the trucks. The county supplies all the medication. County supplies all the equipment. Legal counsel. Legal counsel. All those things would have to be supplied if they go separate. Uh, and I hope that they're remembering all this as they make their decision. Well, gentlemen, I, I'll Thank just say this. My parting shot is I've been here since November of 2007, and this board right here is the best chance we have to, for success long term. And I appreciate your leadership and your help and guidance along the way. Thank you. See, you, see you next we're, week. I mean, it shows by the money, like you said. I mean, we're, we're stepping up to the plate. I hope the districts do too. But at the next meeting, I'd like to have a set date, whether it's November 1st or first of the year. Are you in or out? But I think we need to set up a date where we need to know. Yeah. Yeah. I think right now, right now, the date's November 1st. And I'm, I'm just as happy as November. Like yeah, November 4th is our next meeting. So we'll stick with that. Something. Okay. You know, <coughs> okay. Here.